Fiesta. Good morning. How are you? I got your card today. I'm very curious about it. <laughs> Hi, Sandy. How are you? How's everything in West Chicago? Hi, Leslie. How are you doing? It's so good to see everybody on here. Um, when, if you're jumping on and you're brand new, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. Oh, my goodness. Robin, hello. I'm so excited when I see you here. <laughs> hey, Tony. Thanks for being here and sharing as always. Hi, Sandra. I'm looking over at my laptop because it's so much easier to read the comments coming in. Hi, Peggy. I'm so happy that y'all are here. Hi, Gail. Are you listening? Okay, good, good, good. Hi, Jean. Uh, you got to love a workplace that lets you listen to, you know, your crafting uh, channels and everything. That's awesome. Okay, I am so excited to show you this quilt block because as we go along to achieve the final block, you're going to see that we have actually created three quilt blocks. Now, you can stop at any point in this construction if you like what you see, but with the same pieces that we're going to use and Naturally, like in the very beginning, you're not going to use all the pieces that I had you cut. But um, it's really exciting to me when I see something evolving along the way when I'm creating it. When I do my paper beads, uh, rolling, you know, strips of paper, just seeing the progression of the raw paper to the glaze and how they finish, it all amazes me because every step of the way you see a change and you see something happening and it gets you really excited to keep going. And that's what this uh, quilt block, the way that I am going to show you how to do it, um, happened for me. And that's why I'm so excited uh, to show it to you. So um, while I flip the camera around, I want you to say good morning to each other, greet each other. It's only going to take me a second just to flip some things around and then we're going to get started. So hold on. I got my pre-order this morning. Now, mind you, it's not a really big pre-order for the new catalog, but I did get... Um, a pretty heavy box and um, I'll be going through that when when, uh, when we're all done here but uh, anyway it's so good to see so many on hi Paula how are you hi Peggy okay so let's get started everybody can hear me okay is that Okay, I'm not backwards or anything like that. Let's move this stuff around a little bit. Okay, so I'm not even going to show you the card because I want you to be anticipating what you are going to see happen. Okay, so um, yesterday I posted um, like cutting instructions or sharing with you what it is I was going to be using to make this card. And so let's go over those pieces really quick. So here's a four and a quarter by 11 sheet of cardstock. So that's half of a sheet of cardstock in the portrait mode. And I scored it at five and a half. Now, uh, we're going to score this again because we're going to make a book binding fold. Um, but for right now, that's what the card base is. Um, the inside of the card has a four inch square of basic white. And um, I have a little accent piece that's going to go on the side here. And that's five eighths by four. So it's just a scrap just to give it some color. Um, 
in the uh, inside of the card. And we're going to do just a simple uh, Merry Christmas greeting right on the basic white. I have a, um, a piece that's four by five and a quarter. That's going to be the back side of my quilt card. So that's going to go on the back of the card. And um, to frame our quilt block, I have a slightly larger than four and one eighth square of this beautiful, like real red cherry cobbler marbled paper from the Joy of Christmas. What I did was I put my paper at four and one eighth. And then I slid it over just enough that it was between the next hash mark and um, the four and one. So it's like half of a sixteenth. And the reason why I made it slightly bigger is I wanted to see a little bit more red border framing my quilt block than what I got with just four and one eighth. But it couldn't be four and one quarter because then it would fill up the whole you know, one side of the book binding fold. So it's slightly larger than four and one eighth inch square. The quilt block requires a four inch square. And this, this square right here, if you are, if you have chosen a directional pattern, make this your four, make it your four inch um, square. It's going to be a lot easier on you. Um, you don't have to worry about cutting half square triangles a certain way in order to have your directional pattern looking like it's supposed to. Okay, so make this four inch square your directional fa uh, pa fabric. <laughs> make it your directional pattern. And then I've got a two and seven eighths inch square that um, is complementary to the four inch square. And since this is the Joy of Christmas designer series paper, um, and it's going to be a Christmas card, um, red and green, naturally. Okay. Um, this is a two inch square. And again, it just needs to complement the two colors that I've already chosen. This paper here is going to frame the, uh, the quilt block. So you don't want it competing uh, too much with the two colors that are going to create your star. Okay, you want that star to shine. You don't want it to get lost. And this actually becomes the background paper. So you don't want it to get lost. You want your star to shine. And then there's four one inch squares of that same paper. Okay. And this uh, one and one eighth by four and an eighth, this little strip here is going to go um, on your book binding fold. Okay. And I chose Pebbled Path as that color. So, um, where do I want to start? Let's start, let's get that little bit of stamping out of the way. And then I will put my other score line on the card base and then we'll do some cutting with the trimmer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to just put this little accent trim on the right side of that basic white insert. And I really should, I'm gonna bring in my silicone mat to protect my space and keep me from transferring glue all over the place. So there I just added that accent strip. Now the stamp set that I'm using is called More Wishes. And because it's photopolymer, I'm going to bring in my piercing mat to give a little bit more cushion. The photopolymer stamps don't come with that red rubber. And sometimes they just, in order to get a really nice look, it needs that cushion. 
So I'm going to use Shaded Spruce as my color. And what I did was I la layered up the Merry and the Christmas. Can you see that? I put them on the same block. That way I'm just going to do all my stamping at the same time. And I apologize, but I got to bring this closer to me. I, I am not standing up and I don't want my head in the camera. But there's our Merry Christmas. That's all the stamping that I'm going to do. And I love this font because it's whimsical, but still fits the feel of the quilt card. Okay, so I'm going to set that to the side. We'll get the mat out of the way also. And I'm going to bring in my trimmer. I just cleaned this last night. What is on there already? Okay, so I'm going to bring in my trimmer. We need, uh, so we have our card base and we've got it scored at five and a half right down the middle. <clears throat> so five and a half, score it right down the middle. Let me move this over a little bit and bring it down maybe a little bit. Now I'm going to move it. I'm going to move my paper over to the right and I'm going to go from five and a half to four and a quarter. Okay. And make another score line. So when I take it, take it out and I just turn it around. Now, I guess this would depend on, you know, like if you're, maybe there's a difference if you're right handed or left handed, but I'm going to fold it. Where's my bone folder? going to give that center a nice crease and then I'm going to fold this front on, back on itself give that a crease and this creates that book binding fold okay so we're going to do some things with that so um, I'll set that aside for now now we need to get our pieces ready for our quilt block. Okay, I'm going to move out of the way everything that I don't need right now. Keep it all together so I know where to find it. Okay, you got to go over there too. Okay, so um, not doing anything with the four inch square. The two and seven eighths of an inch square. What we're going to do is you're going to put this in your trimmer. You're going to set it on point. On point means we're going to have, it looks like a diamond. Okay. And we're going to put the points right in our cutting track. The points that are across from each other. Put the points in the cutting track. Hold it if you have to. Close this guard. Let's get the, and that just made me move my points. Um, get your scoring blade out of the way. Close that guard. And give it a slice. Okay, just like that. And then, whether you're working at the top or the bottom of your trimmer, you're going to take one of the pieces and you're going to put that long that long cut line up at the top, put the point, the mountain point, back in the track of your trimmer. And cut it in half again. So here, what we're doing is we're creating four triangles, okay? And now do that to your remaining piece. So now you have these four large triangles. Okay. Now bring in that two inch square 
and we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to cut four triangles out of this one two inch square. Okay. And then put it up at the top or the bottom, however you're working. Just make sure that that mountain point is in the track. There's two. Trying not to get my blade to cut right at that point so I don't crinkle up my paper. So now I have four smaller triangles. And that is all we're going to use the trimmer for. So put your pieces to the side. I'm going to get my silicone mat out of the way because I want to use my grid paper to help me. We need to draw, we need to uh, create a grid on our four inch square of designer series paper. And since this is four inch, four inches, halfway is two inches. So I'm just going to make sure, I'm going to use this really dark line on my grid paper to let me know my halfway, both vertically and horizontally. I just have to find the center, and I know that eight of these quarter inch squares will give me two inches because you can get four of these little squares per inch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, but now I need to slide it up because I need this centered horizontally also. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you don't have grid paper, just find your center, both horizontally and vertically. I'm going to bring in a pencil. I'm going to use that dark line to line up my ruler. Did I say pencil? I meant ruler. Okay. Now, I want to draw a line and you're, um, if you're working with a dark paper, I don't suggest using a white gel pen because um, sometimes you can see the pencil lines that you make and want to go back in and erase. Just make sure that you're um, pressing hard enough that you see the lead. Okay, so there's that way. And you may not be able to see my line, but I can see it. And then I want to go horizontally. Now, this is going to be fun because I almost have to get my head way up here. We're, we're just trying to find our middles. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that I did it right. Once you found your horizontal and your vertical middles, we're going to take our ruler and we're going to go from corner to, to opposite corner, drawing a diagonal line. And you'll do this to the other side also. This is just going to help us put our pieces where they, they need, to, need to go as we're re creating this Lemoyne star. To me, the Lemoyne star is one of the most beautiful quilt stars that there is. I never made one with fabric because of the angles. Um, I just didn't want to do it. I know people who have done it and said that they will never do it again. Um, maybe that's why I didn't want to do it to begin <laughs> with. But I'm telling you, you're going to be able to do it with paper and you're going to feel so accomplished. So I, that's why I'm so excited to show this to you. Hi, Elaine. Good morning, Lori. Hi, Karen. So good to have you here. Hi, Katie and Shelly. Hi, Vicki and Holly and Catherine and Martha and Debbie. And another Karen. Hi, Jasmine. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, everybody. I'm so happy that you're here. Okay, so let's see if I can get this in the right light. That like right here, the way I'm holding it, I can see my pencil lines. 
okay? You just want to make sure that you can see them. Maybe you can see them easier that way. I don't know. But um, it's because of the green paper. But I know where they are so that when I start placing my um, red triangles on them, I know where I need to be. So let's talk about, I want to talk about your center. This is where all of your lines are meeting, right in the middle. When we start gluing down our large red triangles, I want, I want my point. You're going to have quite, you're going to have four points coming together. This is the reason why I didn't, wouldn't want to sew a Lemoyne star because you're going to have a lot of points coming together in the set, you know, the center of your quilt block. But I do with my paper want them to be touching each other right in that center. I don't want them um, overlapping each other, but I do want them to touch. So what that means is if when I glue these down, if I have a, any excess, I want it hanging off of the outside boundaries of my four inch square because I can trim it up when I'm all done gluing the triangles on, I can square it back up. I want to look like I've got nice points in the center. Now here's something to keep in mind. If you're, if you're unhappy with your points in the center, well, when I finish off this card and embellish it, I'm going to put um, a gem in the middle. So if you don't like your middle, that's okay. There's always a way to um, cover it up. But what I want to make point out is that you want your points to meet in the middle. And you want your point out here to be on that, um, on that corner. You don't want it to be off to the side. You, it's important that your line falls right into that corner. Okay. So let's put, and we're going to put our red triangles down um, every other, every other um, triangle that we draw, that we drew. So I'm going to put this here. I want to make sure that my, my angle here is going up into that corner. Sometimes you just, you have to make it work. Like I said, we're going to um, square up this block when we're done. So if there's anything hanging off of those outside borders, we can clean it up. And what you want is you want the long side of your triangle. Okay. You want the long side of your triangle always going towards the center. Okay. You want your mountain point to the outside. So I'm going to skip this triangle here. I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to use that pencil line that I drew to help keep me straight horizontally. But it's very important that this corner lands right on that corner. Okay. You'll see why as we go. Okay. So let's just keep going around. As I had mentioned um, in the write-up, and, and feel free to spin your block around in order to make it easier to work. Instead of trying to like twist your hand and all of that, move that paper around. Make this as easy as you can on yourself. I'm going to put those, that point in the center. Make sure that I'm going out to that corner, that it's not off. Um, so uh, back to what I was going to say. I had mentioned that um, as we're getting to the finish, or from the beginning to the finish of our Lemoyne star, that there are several 
quilt patterns that you're going to see. This is your first one. This quilt pattern is called the pinwheel. So, you've already created, you've created one quilt block already out of the first two pieces of designer series paper that, um, that we chose to use. Here I want to stop for a moment and show you why it was a good idea to use your directional paper as your base. If you had used the directional paper as your two and seven eighths inch square and then cut them up in triangles, you might have had your pattern going this way, you got your pattern going this way, you know, and it doesn't look like it's all one piece. Well, by putting your directional paper on the bottom, you keep everything where it's supposed to be, okay? If that is important to you, especially with stripes, okay? Hi, Valerie. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Marilyn. And hi, Lori. So there was a reason why um, I suggested using that directional paper on the bottom or as your biggest square, okay? Quilt block number one, pinwheel. Okay, now I'm going to flip it over, and because I was concentrating on having my points there and they weren't overlapping each other, I do have some trimming to do, and that is very easy. That four-inch square tells me, you know, it, it tells me that where to cut and where not to cut because I don't want to cut that. I just want to cut what's hanging off here and you can use your snips use your trimmer just cut that excess paper off if you wanted to you could put this in your guillotine trimmer and uh, square it you know right up to four inches but your square is four inches, so as long as you have that paper off of there, you have um, cleaned it up. Okay, so there's our first quilt block. Now what we're going to do is I want you to bring in those four um, smaller triangles. Even though these are sitting on top of our pattern, they're actually going to be, become our background. Okay, so they will be in the back. What's important? This is your mountain corner. You want the mountain corner facing inward. You want the long edge along the outside border. And what you want is you want this uh, mountain point to fall right on this seam that you have created by building your pinwheel on top of your back, um, your base square. So you want the point on the seam. You want the long side of your triangle to the outside of your block. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's put these four triangles down. Again, however you need um, your paper to be so that you can work comfort comfortably. Don't be afraid to spin that around. Put that point on there. Make sure that your straight edge, edge is all the way out to the outside. And just continue to put these triangles down. Back when I first started doing the barn quilt card kits, we did a Lemoyne star. And it, it's funny how far uh, things have come for me in, in a couple of years as to how I look at how I approach a quilt block. Back when we did that, 
we took a rectangle and we made a tick mark and we were actually cutting our angles off. And instead of going to all the trouble, when we can work with squares and um, half square triangles, I, I've just seen where like, you know what, I may have to revisit that barn quilt uh, pattern because there's such an easier way <laughs> to do it now. So um, it, it's just, it's funny to look back at the patterns that I have done before and how um, they've become easier over time with just learning and looking at patterns in a different way. So we've got one more to put on. And you will see another quilt pattern right here. So this is the X quilt pattern. I don't know if it's got a technical name, but you'll see that it is an X. Okay, I wanna make sure my points. So here's your second quilt block. Here you have your X. Isn't it amazing how we are creating these quilt blocks as we go? And you could stop right now. You could say, you know what? I like that quilt block. You know, well, you're just not going to use your last four pieces. Or if you're going to recreate it, you would cut just the, the um, squares that you need to make into the triangles. Okay. So there we go. Now um, we've got our four one inch squares. What I like to do is I like to measure from my point here to the corner and just make sure that it's one inch. Um, sometimes our cutting can vary and it's at this point, if I needed to make that square either a little smaller or a little bigger, I could just start over and um, make my adjustment and create some new squares. But all of this is looking really close. So, but I just wanna do that in order to see if I need to make any adjustments. Now with your squares, you're gonna tuck them up into that corner and you want, you want this corner right here to land on this line right here. And can you see what has happened? You just created one of your points on your Lemoyne star by adding the square up into the corner. And you're gonna go all the way around your quilt block, okay? So I'm gonna put that all the way up there in the corner. And I'm gonna put that point on my line. This should, should create some almost like 99% beautiful points all the way out to the outside. Okay. And even though the paper that we're using right now to that's laying on top, it's laying on top, but can you see how this becomes my background? But it's like reverse thinking in a way. Okay. So just keep going. Oh, Karen, that is so sweet. Thank you for saying that. Um, hi, Jill. Um, hi, Carol and Jean. Oh, you guys, I feel the love. Thank you. I I just love sharing this with everybody. Um, for every person who said, I can't quilt or, you know, I, I could never do that. I want to show you that, yes, you can. It's in a different form but yes, you can. So again, my point is on this line here. I'm all the way out to the outside. And we're just going around. Isn't this so cool? Look at that Lemoyne star coming together. One of the hardest quilt blocks. Now, maybe not today because patterns have come a really long way in the quilting world. 
And there's always somebody coming up with a shortcut or a different way to do it. But from what I remember of the Lemoyne star and the reason why I would never want to make that quilt, I'm doing it with paper. Look at how pretty this is. I just love it, love it, love it. And I hope there's somebody out there right now going, oh my gosh, I can't believe I did this. Perfect points on the outside. As long as you're lining up your points on those seams, you are achieving perfect points. This is good. This is to me is as good as paper piecing with fabric. And I, I cannot understand the concept of paper piecing. Um, <laughs> it gets me all confused. But here we go. There's your Lemoyne star. So how many are, how many of you are like so proud? Um, so if this, Jill's asking, if this were a quilt, would you be putting these pieces on top? No, Jill. If I remember right, we would be, um, I think we would be like sewing, um, Y seams and then fitting in a piece. It Back in the day, it was very difficult. You had Y seams uh, to where you sewed only so far and then you fit it in on another piece and then come back and sew those two pieces um, back together. It was more difficult back in the day. Um, but no, you would be, and you would be cutting your pieces. So you would be taking your strips of fabric and cutting on whatever angle with your um, ruler and stuff to get these diamond shapes here. Totally just blows my mind. Um, here we achieved this just using squares. Squares that we cut down into the triangles that we needed. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just so happy that you all are so tickled about this. Okay, so we've created our star. Now, if you wanted to, you could run this through an embossing folder and do your quilting. I love the um, look of how the layers are on this, but you could definitely do some quilting. I have uh, this here to show you. Now, this is one that I just did with some scraps, and you can see what the quilting would look like if you run it through an embossing folder. Okay, so there's all that fancy quilting that can be done. Okay, so if you want to, run it through. I'm going to complete the card without quilting it, but just know that this is what it, what the, um, what effect you get by running them through an embossing folder. Okay, so that's, that's the look. Um, before we go any further, I want to show you the three blocks that you achieved starting here and ending here. So when you see them beside each other, you um, get an idea of the steps along the way that you've done. Okay. Um, again, what amazes me is the very last pieces that we put on our quilt block are on top, actually become our background, and it, it looks like the star is on top. Okay, I want to show you another possibility. If our squares here were not the same color as our triangles, here's another block that you can achieve. Let's, let's move them kind of around like this. Here I put a darker square and this I was just playing around with and I didn't like it. So it didn't become anything. But can you see how now we've got a cube um, that we've created by making this a solid piece? So here's another totally different look. Whatever color you would want to put here, it creates the cube. And then here's the sides of your, your cube all meeting 
in the center. And that is a change just simply by changing out the color um, of your paper for your four corners. Okay? Let's keep going and finishing our card, okay? Just wanted to show you all your possibilities so far. So I'm going to finish. I am creating a PDF that I hope to have done um, over the weekend. So um, I'm going to use those pieces there to um, include in the PDF so you can see them along the way. So now let's bring in... Let's bring in our card base. And what I want to test out first is this slightly larger than four and one eighth inch square. This is what's going to frame my quilt block. But I, and it's only going to leave me just a little bit of the card base showing through here. I just wanted to make sure it fit in case I had to scale it down, but that'll fit there. And then my quilt block will sit right on top of it. See how that red just gives a pretty little border, breaks up, you know, this white. And, and what it does is it sets the block. It keeps your eye from moving and thinking, oh, it go, it, you know, I need my eye needs to go over here. That little bit of border is going to keep your eye on the quilt block. Okay. So right now what I'm doing is just making sure my pieces all fit. Um this little piece of pebbled path is going to fit on that book binding fold. Everything fits okay. So um what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and glue my quilt block to that background piece that gives us that really just that pretty little border. I needed to see just a little bit more red. Uh, when I did it at four and an eighth, I just, I wasn't seeing enough red. So I just made it in between the next two hash or the next two lines on the um on the ruler um so let's say um here's my if it was let's say this was four four and one eighth which would be right there i just went in between the eighth and that next little line there didn't want to go a quarter because that's all the space I have um on my card base but I needed to just see a little bit more red so I've got that I'm gonna go ahead and glue um this little strip down and then I'm gonna add my ribbon and then I'll seal up my book binding fold So I went with the Pebbled Path music notes from The Joy of Christmas. And I'm going to bring in the Very Vanilla. Well, that's what I did on my first card. I don't think I want more red. Because I like that. Um, oh. Um, and I don't want to say Buffalo check or whatever. This is a retired red, but it's all that I have. Let's see, do I want to do... What I liked was having that ch that uh, check there. What do you guys think? More red or the buffalo? Or the very vanilla and um, black, the gingham. What do you think? Three sixteenths. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, thank you. The check. See, I like the check, too. And we've got a red. Um, It looks like the check. Three out of five from what I can see on my computer. 
Um, I'll use the red in another card because I've got more to make. So um, anyway, I'm not going to put this on just yet. I'm going to open up my my card and I'm just going to cheat with some uh, scotch tape to hold that ribbon and bring it around. Whoops. We'll put another piece down and then we'll cut it off. Because I'm going to tie a knot on the, on the uh, front. Little knot that will slide back and forth so I can put it where I want it. Okay. And I'm going to cut off a piece here. I love sliding knots like this because I can put them wherever I want. So I'm wrapping this around the ribbon that's showing on the front. And do you see how I can slide this knot wherever I want it? I love knots. It doesn't lock me in to one thing. <laughs> oh my goodness. I know you guys have heard me so many times say I love my options. And then we're just going to trim it off a little bit. Okay. So there's, there's that. Um, now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put adhesive... On this, um, this, uh, just this strip right here, and I'm going to close it up, give it a nice press, and that's going to seal, that's going to be our, the spine like of a book. This is the book binding fold. Okay, so that when you open it like this, the book binding fold is one of the, the best in my opinion in my opinion it's one of the best fun folds um because it creates a square uh it really can showcase your quilt blocks and so then i'll come in and i'll put my star again i did not i did not quilt my star I liked the look of the flat, um, kind of, you know, just like flat paint. And I like seeing the layers. When you quilt it, the pressure of the rollers in your machine are going to like flatten things out and smooth them out. I really like the feel and the texture of it just as it is. Okay, so there's the front of our Christmas Lemoyne star. And then I'm going to take that um, card insert that we stamped and I'm going to put that on the inside. Leaving a nice border all the way around it. I really like the font of the stamp set. And it comes with different. You've got your bold um, font here, you know, just nice and bold. And then you've got your, um, your cursive uh, font that looks more uh, farmhouse, uh, that farm farmhouse look. So I just thought it gave some whimsy to the quilt card and didn't take anything away from the style. So now on the back, I'm going to put my uh, quilt backing. Gotta use up your paper, right? Um, 
don't want to keep holding on to it till next Christmas. So um, if anytime you're wanting to use up your designer series paper so that you can move on, make the back pretty like your card. Give it some character on the back. Um, okay, so that goes there. I've got my signature button here that I created the card. I'm going to put that in the center. I love my buttons. This button was just created um, in Word. So you could just go on your... I didn't do it. A good friend of mine did it for me because I'm not that computer savvy. <laughs> but you can uh, create a PDF that you can print out as you need them. And then I just use a scallop punch to punch them out. So there's the back. And now all that's left is to give it a little bling. And these are the in color dots. And I'm going to bring, I'm going to use the pebbled path on pebbled path. I, I like the look of that. Um, I'm going to use a large circle. Even though I'm really happy with the points. I'm going to put the largest one in the center of my star. And then I'm going to use one of each of the two different sizes that are left here. And I'm just going to put them over here in the pebbled path uh, designer series paper. I love just how it looks on top of each other. It gives that metallic um, edge. To the quilt card, it brings out the pebbled path that's um, in the designer series paper. And that is our Lemoyne Christmas star. That's our card for today. I, I am really hoping that um, if you didn't try it, maybe you just watched me put it together. I hope it intrigues you to give it a try, especially if you thought you couldn't do it. Okay, so um, that is the card. And then again, I just want to uh, bring in the other two quilt blocks that were created along the way. And show you the final card. You could use either you could use any of these quilt blocks in your Christmas card. But the star of the show is the Lemoyne star. So thank you for um spending some time with me. I do have um some that I'm gonna finish, but I need to use them with my PDF. <laughs> so um I do want to give away two of these Lemoyne stars. I would hope that you would get them in time for Christmas, um, especially if you wanted to share them with someone else. But if you type Lemoyne Star in the comments, then I'll pick two people and the two names that um, are picked, I will send you each a card. Okay. So um, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for jumping on and following. Uh, when I do have the PDF ready, you will find it in the file section in the community group. Uh, it's a private group called Quilt Cards and More. That's the only place I can find to put it. Um, and I think you're going to love the community there anyway when you join. So that's where it'll be posted when it's, when it's all done and ready. Okay. Hi, Debbie. Hey, Barbara. <laughs> hey, Rachel. Oh my goodness. Thank you guys for being here with me this Thursday morning. Um, I'm going to let you go. I've got that pre-order box downstairs that I want to open up. And uh, here in Ohio, it's lunchtime. So um, I look forward to seeing your cards. If you would po uh, post them over in that private group, I'd love to see what you come up with. And uh, I'll be talking with you soon, okay? So everybody have a blessed day.